Hey everyone! What's up my pineys? Welcome to another Piney Podcast. Oh, I got a good one for you. I've got a great one, uh, Piney fans. But first, a little business. Uh, first, an update on the fire in Burlington at Penn Forest. Uh, the New Jersey State Troopers are looking for two men who each were in a Jeep. Somehow they got their picture. I'm not exactly sure how. Uh, they got a picture of these two guys just sort of standing in the woods watching the fire from a distance. So they're wanted for questioning now. I, I have no idea if they're involved, but if you uh, Google it on um, uh, you know on the internet, you'll I'm sure the picture will come up and you can look at it and see if you're that person. The cops want to talk to you. So um, number two. There is the vote on um, the uh, gas pipeline that they're thinking about building underneath the Pine Barrens, which is an incredibly bad idea, has been delayed. It looked like it was going to get killed, and now the whole thing's delayed. Thank you very much, Chris Christie. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of drinking water with gasoline in it. There's a huge aquifer underneath the Pine Barrens, and uh, building a gas pipeline just sounds like a huge disaster on so many levels. The construction alone, I'm sure, will pollute the aquifer, uh, not to mention one leak, and we're going to be all drinking gas. So let's not do that. Let's let's kill this thing. Let's not ruin the water we need to live. Thank you. Okay, so big news. I came across some really great information. For me, being a big fan of the Pine Barrens, as many of you know, I am the writer of the Jersey Devil comic, and two of the issues we did were about Joe and the refugees. And if you don't know about Joe Mulliner, uh, he was sort of the Robin Hood of the Pine Barrens. Um, he used to rob the towns during the Revolutionary War where all the men were up fighting uh, in the North, and his gang uh, was called the Refugees. But I found out tonight they weren't the only band of refugee uh, loyalists. Apparently, there were three gangs, and I had no idea about the other two. I had only read about Joe. I guess he's probably the most well-known down south uh, because he's a little more south. There was another gang uh, called the Fagin Gang, and uh, couldn't find much about them. I'm gonna have to do more research. But the guy I read about tonight is Captain John Bacon. <laughs> yes, that was his name. Captain John Bacon uh, and his gang of pine robbers or uh, refugees, they, like uh, Joe Mulliner's gang, were British loyalists. And basically, they figured the Brits were going to win the war, so they were going to help sabotage supply lines and make a little cash and rob people in the interim. So Bacon was actually officially commissioned by the British government to employ these guerrilla tactics against the Americans. Who knew? I always thought that the Brits were too stuffy and proper to do those kinds of things. I guess they did it on the sly, paid this guy some money to, you know, mix things up in the background of everything. So him and his gang, operated in the Pine Barrens, but a little further north than you would consider the Pine Barrens. Uh, kind of around the area of Penn State Forest, but a little bit uh, north and further east towards the shore. Kind of that area. It was a lot woodsier, so I mean that area is Pine Barrens, but at the same time it's kind of more built up um, in some spots, depending. I mean, typically when you talk about Pine Barrens, you're going further south, but you know, that is definitely Pine Barrens territory. And Bacon and his gang were, were known for the uh, 782 massacre at Long Beach. And what had happened was there was a group of American soldiers, uh, they were on this ship called the Alligator, and they were, you know, patrolling along and they spotted this abandoned ship. Uh, so they got off their ship and they, you know, rummaged through it and there was a bunch of stuff on it and the crew had abandoned it. 
they weren't sure why. So they decided to uh, take everything for the war effort. Um, that was totally legal in those days, you know, maritime law and all that was all in the water. So they unloaded a bunch of the stuff and then decided to make camp for the night. Uh, some of the men stayed on the ship. A few went, uh, I think a few went back to HQ or whatever in another ship or on land. Um, and a bunch of them camped out, like about 20 of them. Uh, Bacon and his men came upon the camp. They were warned uh, by one of the sailors. And uh, he and his guys snuck up to the camp with knives and they killed 19 sailors. Um, now most of them were killed in the initial attack because all these guys were asleep. And so these guys, man, that was brutal to kill a bunch of dudes in their sleep. I mean, it's wartime. Uh, that was like, still. Um, these guys weren't soldiers either, keep in mind. These guys were British loyalists, whatever they were, employing these guerrilla tactics. So it was a big outrage. And at the time, the war was still going on, but the United States and the Brits had a sort of ceasefire. They were trying to negotiate things, but this certainly did not help things. People were pissed. Uh, a 50 pound bounty was put on Bacon's head and they were looking for him. And for a long time, they couldn't find him. Then in 1783, I believe, let me just check the notes on this. I think it was 1783. Um, Bacon, yeah, yeah, I believe so. So uh, Bacon was um, headed to uh, the Cedar Bridge Tavern, which the reason I know that is because there is a recent article about the Cedar Bridge Tavern. It's just been restored. Uh, it's not the original original. It was like one that was rebuilt right near when the original one burned down. Um, so it's not quite the original, but it was built in like 1812. You can uh, visit it now. Uh, it's off of Route 72 in the Pine Barrens, not far from Penn Forest. And uh, you have to go down 72 and then hit uh, Cedar Bridge Road. And uh, so it's kind of kind of in a remote area, sort of all by itself, but they had reenactors there uh, from colonial times uh, and it's all reopened. So I definitely got to take a trip and check it out. Anyhow, um, Bacon and his guys were said to be in the area. So a troop of um, patriots, Hi, Dougie. Do you want to be in this video? There's a group of patriots who were uh, hunting Bacon and his guys <laughs> uh, went down and they ended up staying at the Cedar Bridge Tavern. And word got to Bacon, and Bacon, maniac that he was, decided he'd ambush uh, the force and kill them. Uh, but it didn't work out so well. Uh, so when he tried to ambush him, he was outgunned and outnumbered. One of his guys got killed, he got wounded. Uh, two other guys got wounded, but they escaped. It wasn't until they caught up with him uh, in 1783. <laughs> uh, Bacon was in a tavern there. I believe it was called like the Rose Tavern or something. And uh, the uh, Captain John Stewart uh, caught up with him uh, in, in, a, in, a, in this tavern. Uh, Bacon reached for his musket because he probably knew Bacon probably knew he was going to be hanged. I mean, it was a pretty famous massacre. He was definitely a villain. He killed people, he robbed people, and the war was over by this time. Oh, and the incident at the Cedar Ridge Tavern is considered the last, um, last battle of the Revolutionary War. So things were dying down, and that battle was like the last one. So that was a little uh, bit of interesting history. Anyhow, so uh, Bacon goes for his musket and Stuart stabs him. And uh, uh, he didn't quite die <laughs> and there was a struggle. So Stuart uh, pulled out his musket and finished him off. 
and then they dragged Bacon's body through the streets and they were going to give him a very disrespectful burial uh, according to what I was reading uh, but um, apparently Bacon's brother uh, pleaded with the mob and said please let me bury my brother and give him a proper burial and uh, the mob was like well okay and they gave the body to the family and uh, that was the end of John Bacon so wow I could not believe it fascinating story um, not as uh, <laughs> nice guys as Joe Mulliner and the refugees Joe Mulliner was uh, was not a killer he didn't he, or at least from what I read he was more of a gentleman um, thief kind of guy where he would just uh, go in town and his his guys would hold everybody hostage and he they'd rob everybody and he'd dance with the ladies and they'd leave and there's all sorts of nice stories centered around Joe Mulliner about him uh, helping a woman who was betrothed to a guy who she didn't want to marry uh, but Joe snuck into the wedding, uh, had his guys kill the light somehow, and then he threatened the groom, and the groom left, and she didn't have to marry him, and then Joe danced with, danced with her, and they had a good time. Uh, so, I mean, he was eventually hanged, but, um, you know, it, he wasn't known as a guy who murdered, you know, a bunch of people in their sleep. I mean, this guy Bacon sound, sounds pretty bad. Um, so I was just dumbfounded. I hadn't heard of this guy because uh, back in the day I did a ton of piney research. But uh, I guess that was pre-internet, yeah. So that's probably why I didn't come across it. And it's just a good timing that the uh, Cedar Bridge Tavern has been restored and that story popped up and I was digging through Wikipedia and various places to uh, find it. And I also got to do some research now on the, the Fagan gang and see what he was all about. These pine robbers, or refugees, whatever you want to call them, are fascinating. Fascinating to me. And if you would like to read about the fascinating Joe Mulliner and the refugees in the two-issue story arc of Jersey Devil, uh, you can uh, email me at thefixesin at comcast.net. I'll put my uh, uh, some kind of link <laughs> that you can get to my website. If you would like to order the comics, I will sign them for you, the signing signing is is nothing it's it's free uh you know you can have we'll do we'll do a special we'll do both books for five bucks i'll sign them free shipping if you uh mention this video and and uh uh you know email me through the video so a little special a little special here on the piney podcast only for the pineys uh or you know anybody who who is a piney at heart that's it for the piney podcast my name is tony DiGeralmo. Check me out on Patreon. Check out my comics at the Web Comic Factory and Super Frat. Also, uh, check out my Twitter feed. I've got uh, cool links to various comedy that I write on some websites. I'm writing comedy on the U Norker <laughs> and uh, Beats Press. It's kind of they're kind of both like onion type sites. So if you like that kind of humor, and that's it, my pineys. We will see you next time.